Father, who art in heaven. Lord, you are a great and Dear God, God. Um, bless my Father today. Lord, we just pray, God, that this day will touch people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. It's been said prayer is a journey, a long road that leads us to God. It's often a road we stumble upon at some point in our life, an emergency, an epiphany, or just simply a desire to tap into something bigger than us. When was the first time you ever prayed? And can you even remember what you asked for? I'm sure my first prayers must have been something like help or God, give me a new Barbie doll. Over the years, my prayers have changed somewhat but some kernels remain. It all started when I believed someone was out there, listening, and that maybe he would even answer my prayers. That's where my first steps began. But what is prayer? Well, that's where our journey begins. Prayer is a dialogue. Just simply talking to God. It's a conversation with God. Getting to know God, having relationship with Him. It's a very mystical expression of, of who we are. Getting still enough and quiet enough to enter into the presence of God. Communion with Jesus. Communion with God. Speaking with Him on a daily basis. And with a good friend, we can pick up the conversation anywhere along the line. You're talking, you're listening. Prayer is talking to Him, and He talks to us. It's, it's both sides of that. So prayer is talking to God. But why do we need to have a conversation in the first place? I mean, doesn't he know our thoughts before we can even get them off our tongue? And yet he seems to want us to. I mean, even Jesus, the Son of God, prayed. Father, the hour has come. Steve Long, pastor of Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, explains. I'll tell you why Jesus prayed, because when he lived on planet Earth, he was not functioning as the divine Son of God. He was functioning in his, in his absolute humanity, even though he's 100% God. It was essential for Jesus to communicate to God, to pray and to listen and to see in the, uh, what God was giving for him to know what his agenda was for that day. So it's about God's agenda, not ours. But let's face it, when most of us pray, it is about us, what we want. You know, the minute we start talking about prayer, we start talking about talking, telling God a lot of stuff. Uh, we're we're kind of like my, my uh, boy when he was seven years old coming into the living room and saying, I'm going to bed. I'm going to be praying. Anybody want anything? He says prayer isn't so much about wants, but needs. We need to pray more than we know, I went there, which brings I us back to Jesus. He struggled like we are struggling. He got tired at the end of the day. He was hungry, he had to eat food. He had all the limitations of a human being. But Jesus always prayed so that he, as a human being, not just as God, but as a human being, would be empowered to be more than a conqueror over temptation. Father, bring glory to your name. So now we've established prayer is a conversation, that Jesus was our model for prayer, and if he needed to pray, so do we. But that's where we encounter the first bump in the road. How do we pray? There are just so many options. Prayers that are read, prayers that are chanted, extemporaneous prayers, prophetic prayers, warfare prayers, healing prayers, prayers of intercession, centering prayers, and even silent prayers. You get the point. But for most of us, the first prayer we ever learn, apart from saying grace at the dinner table, is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer may be our model for praying, but we've created plenty of our own formulas in the last 2,000 years. But can we put prayer in a box? We used to have an, um, a little acronym when I was in Bible college 
for, for praying, and it was uh, the word Acts from the book of Acts. A stands for adoring God for who he is, C, confession, T, thanksgiving, and S is the supplication, the, the asking. So I, I don't follow those kind of formulas. <laughs> I'm afraid of any formula, but even those who think they're full of the Spirit and pray extemporaneously can fall into a formula. Uh, it's about what is God saying today? And so prayer needs to never be locked in a formula completely or we'll lose the relationship. Think about it. When was the last time you had a really good conversation? A really long talk where you share your heart, your problems, and your dreams. This doesn't happen on a daily basis, if at all. And if we aren't having these kind of conversations with people, are we having them with God? Yeah, I guess in a way, in my own way. I pray, I believe in God, I believe in Christ. Yes? Yeah, yeah, I would say I have. Well, everybody pray. I do, yes. When I, sh I don't as much as I should, but I do pray. Our survey reflects the bigger picture in Canada. Though it's hard to quantify just how many people pray, since we're so private about it. While many Canadians do pray, how many are satisfied with their conversations with God? One web poll conducted found that out of over 650 Christians, only 23 were totally satisfied with their prayer life. Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Ray David Glenn has given a lot of thought to this question. Prayer is part of his daily life and vocation. So why aren't people satisfied? Because it's hard. There are a lot of barriers to prayer. One of the things is that you're talking to someone that you can't see. I think the other reason that we don't do it is that our day-to-day -day lives are driven by compulsion. We don't do things because we need to. We do things because we feel like we need to. And many Christians simply don't have a compulsion to pray. We can all say that we believe in God. We can all say that we believe that God is and that he's good and that he's benevolent. But unless we are engaged in the process of deliberately praying in a disciplined way, we are functional atheists. Harsh words. But he may be onto something. Undoubtedly, one of the biggest stumbling blocks to prayer is, you guessed it, guilt. Like exercise and eating right, we know we should do it. It would even make us feel better. But for some reason, we feel we never measure up, so we don't bother trying. Pastor Diane Walker says that's because we don't have realistic expectations. We have these conceptions of, you know, there's the right kind of prayer, and uh, if you don't attain that standard, then you're, you're a failure. And, I think in a lot of ways, it's kind of like being a mother. I mean, if you read parenting books, you would just return the baby to the hospital because you'd say, oh, we'll never meet this standard. The pressure to pray isn't something only pastors feel. It's a guilt trip most of us have been on. But it's something God seems to understand. And so he helps us along the journey. So in other words, he prays when our prayers aren't enough. Terry Bone's job is, is to motivate people to pray, spirit, from ministries to the uh, average person. Where does the spirit he says that if we actually uh, understood the value of prayer, point, we wouldn't hesitate to start the conversation. Right. It's not just talking. Uh, it's listening, reading the Word, the, the Bible, and, and sitting and saying, what do you mean by that, God? Um, having the boldness, the audacity to say, what's on your heart today, God? It's amazing what comes out of a prayer like that. Tomorrow, our journey continues as we explore the dilemmas of prayer. Almost two years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. A lot of people speaking encouraging words that God was gonna heal us miraculously. Uh, that didn't happen. 